tired, I'm, you know, whatever. It can be all of it. And you can always do it directly to me <laughs> if you don't want to send it to the whole group. Anyway, it is good to be with everybody. Um, this is our sixth session, final session. And I would love for us to back and hips. Lovely. Let's um, have a seat. And if you have a strap or you have a hand towel, and I love seeing your faces. I do. <laughs> um, so uh, if you have a strap, that would be excellent. If you have something to sit on, uh, a meditation cushion, a block, a pillow, some blankets, something like that. We're going to start seated today. So I'm just going to read these for a moment as I encourage you to get yourself settled. Okay, I need two hours today. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start some music. And then I'll show you how I set up to sit. And um, I really enjoy having a block. And you can sit cross-legged or you can sit in hero's pose. I'm going to show you hero's pose. Hopefully you can see me. Mm. Hero's pose is, I like it best because it helps me feel like my spine is really straight when I sit. So my legs are folded back, my heels are to the outside of my seat, my thighs are pointing straight ahead all the way together. If this doesn't work for your knees, cross-legged is fine, but my hips are really open and if I'm going to do any kind of seated work, um, pranayama, breath work, I want support. First as always, take in the space that you're in, let your eyes move around. Take a nice deep breath in, maybe let out a sigh. And sometimes we're just like rushing through life. And this is really an invitation to um, step outside of that energy. Really let yourself slow down. So we've got a strap nearby or a towel or something because we're going to do a little bit of shoulder shoulder opening, but I want you to um, just start seated. A little mindfulness. You feel to go ahead and let your eyes close. So the space that I'm in, it's a tiny little space and I tend to close the doors and I visualize that. Really the energy in this space is um, infused with all the things that I want to be nourished with. A feeling of safety, a feeling of peace, of presence, of love, of compassion, of all of the, you know, the words, they hold this energy. If eyes aren't already closed, go ahead and close them. If you want to put your hand, hand on your heart, hand on your solar plexus, that's where mine are wanting to go today. Your heart, deep self-compassion for the journey that, yeah, for the journey that we've all taken. Solar plexus is um, courage. It's really our personal power. Let the facial muscles relax. Maybe bring in a smile of gratitude. It could be for a four-legged, it could be, you know, it could be for someone that just loves you. It could be for the time that you're here and really acknowledging that you, you said yes to being here today. And really, I feel like the level of your presence is the when we're present, we can receive. If we're not here, it's like, yeah, it's very different. So as you start to breathe, just feeling the lungs expand. As you breathe in, take the breath in and bring it all the way down, all through the spine, all through the chakras, all the way down into your pelvis. 
and back up and out and let it be smooth and let it be filled with grace. If we're going to step into a different time and space, if we're going to step into something that feels different, for me, the breath is the door. Slow down enough to just feel the lungs expand and contract, the breath come in and go out. Slow down enough that you might be able to feel your own heartbeat or your pulse somewhere in the body or just the flow of energy. This, you know, really tapping in, tapping in to the intelligence of the body to heal and to hold that, you know, hold that positivity within. And acknowledging the challenges with great compassion. I want you to just relax your hands wherever they are and let's just take a few more breaths like we're breathing in and out together. There is community here, even if we don't know each other. It would feel different if it were just you and me. It would feel different if there were 200 people here. And it's perfect. What's your intention? What's your prayer for yourself for today? I'm going to say mine is to uplift <laughs> you and me, all of us, to elevate. All right, so just drop your chain to your chest the muscles at the back of the neck. Roll your head over to the right and just bring your fingertips on either side. So however you're seated, cross-legged or in hero, this works. Dropping your right ear to your right shoulder. Just roll the head through center, slow into the other side. head back to center and then we'll go ahead and lift the gaze and I'll have you um, I think I'm gonna have you let's do it this way you're gonna reach your arms out in front of you just with your palms facing each other and then you're gonna cross your right wrist over your left right wrist over your left I love when I can see you and it's totally fine to turn your camera off to bring your palms together and I can barely see you by the way <laughs> palms together take the arms straight up I bend my elbows to do that, and then I'm gonna extend my elbows straight and press my fingertips together and lift up. It's almost like there's this growing the spine taller, and then you can visualize that you are rooted, grounded, connected through the base of the spine, through your seat. We wanna feel a sense of being grounded, and we wanna feel that extension. Okay, now I'm gonna turn around do the same thing just because I want you to see me but it should be fairly natural if you let your hands go to catch the right elbow with your left hand I think I did this last week bring your right palm into the middle of your back and try to point your right elbow straight to the ceiling sometimes we'll collapse and the head comes forward try to get your chin parallel to the floor we're stretching the triceps here so tension in the neck for me I always want to Consider that the origin might be the shoulders. And then I'm going to release this left hand. This is where the strap or towel comes in handy. And my palm turns away and I'm going to walk it up and walk it up and walk it up. So if I cannot get my hands, I'm going to grab my strap, just dangle it down my back and you'll hold on to the strap. Take some breaths here. This is external rotation in the top arm and internal in the bottom and the bottom one is generally the one that's quite challenging to swim up your back. So just notice it. When you can't do something, that's an opportunity, actually. That's part of your yoga practice is how do you meet yourself with compassion when there's something you can't do. All right, we're going to go ahead and just let the arms extend out. Drop the strap if you have it. 
Make your right elbow under your left, right elbow under your left. Give yourself a hug. <laughs> it is fun to see you, <laughs> even though my eyesight's terrible. You're going to bring your right fingers to your left palm now, right fingers to your left palm. Otherwise, you stay here. So my right fingers are on my left palm. I'm right here in the center. I'm going to pull my shoulders down away from my ears. This is the top half of Eagle. I always think of the lymph glands under the arms. Pulling the shoulders away from your ears. Bring some attention to the back of your heart. Bring some attention to the back of your heart. Let's breathe in some self-love right there. Take a deep breath in. And just let that feeling kind of radiate and spread through your whole being as you exhale. And then we'll go ahead and let it go. We're going to take the arms all the way up, interlace your fingers, turn the palms up. Anytime your seat gets like frustrating, just change it. Press through the palms. And then we're going to change sides. So I'm going to release my hands back in front of you. I'm going to go left under over right. I think that's the opposite. Left over right. Turn the palms together. I think I did that right. Take the arms up. I bend my elbows to get there and then reach. And again, we're breathing in whatever is in your space. I just think our visualization, our intention, the language we use, it holds an energy, it holds a frequency. So we meet it when it's hmm, fear-based. We meet it with love. We meet it with something um, potentially more true. Okay, I'm going to catch my left elbow. I think I did that right. Left elbow, but I'm not mirror image to you. So you want to check in with your posture here that you're not collapsed. Your chin should be about parallel to the floor. Scratching your triceps. Try to get that arm up by your ear. And then let's take this other one back behind you. Really common. You can connect on one side and the other side's totally different. So your non, your dominant arm is probably tighter. Maybe. And we'll breathe here. I remember for me in moments of chaos, in moments of fear, what could anchor me, I so deeply appreciated it. My, my classes anchored me, the things I could count on. So I'm hopeful that, you know, in time, this is something potentially you can count on a safe space to come. All right, we're going to let it go. Take the arms out to the sides. Take a deep breath in. Left elbow under your right. Give yourself a hug. Find those things that you can count on that anchor you, that feel good. Create more of them when you can. All right, and we can take the left fingers maybe to the right palm. This is Eagle, it's fine to be here. And we're gonna bring attention, eyes closed if you want to the back of the heart again. And as if, you know, you can breathe in right between the shoulder blades, like a hug, unconditional love. Take it in to your whole being. As you exhale, let it just move through the whole body. Let every cell receive it. And then let's go ahead and let that go. Okay, little shoulders. So what I'd like to do now is I actually would like us to come up to standing. So shift your body weight forward. All fours. And I would just step one foot forward and then the other and bring it up. And stand in mountain. I'm going to get us doing a little bit of a different, um, try a slightly different flow. Oh, my camera's angled. Okay. Come into that mountain pose with me. Eat hip distance. I'm going to release my arms at my sides. You know, sometimes this posture feels awkward if we don't typically stand in this way. My shoulders are back, my sternum is open. You know, when there is fear, right? You know, the shoulders can come forward and we get that rounding in the back. We're trying to protect ourselves. So this can feel vulnerable too. Just feeling your breath and feeling your feet. 
similar to what I do, but I'm going to change it slightly. And I will always remind you that if there's something that feels confusing to sit and watch is great and breathe with me. The modify is perfect. Let go of the expectation that you got to do it all for it to be a successful practice. If you're here and present and breathing and intentional, powerful. So we're going to take the arms up as we inhale. I want you to go ahead and hold on to your left wrist with your right hand. So if I'm mirror image to you, I'm holding it here. We're lifting up. Pull your belly in. Engage your thighs by lifting your kneecaps and take a lateral to the side, stretching the spine. Try to keep your chin up off your chest. Bring it back to center. We switch. Holding that opposite wrist. Lengthening up. Big breath in and lateral over to the side. Good. Bring it back to center. We're going to come into that chair pose where you drop your hips and bring your hands to the block. So if you didn't have blocks, it would be fine to just bring your hands perhaps in a prayer. This is much nicer, I think. We're going to step the right leg back as we traditionally do. I'm not going to do our sun salutations. I'm going to leave some other things in. Let's bring that right knee down. Hands are on the blocks and just lean back for a moment. Hands can be on the floor. Hands can be on the thigh. We're looking to open up that right psoas, right hip flexor. When there's fear, when there's stress, very common that the psoas gets very tight. We're going to take a deep breath in. We're going to tuck the back toes, lift the back thigh. And let's find some balance here so your hands can be on the blocks. Maybe you climb up to the thigh, be by a wall or have a folding chair nearby. Just make sure it's something stable. If you're at all concerned, my back heel is lifted. It's not down. That adds an element of balance. I'm going to sweep my arms up with the palms facing in. Steady my gaze. Soften the expression on my face. Maybe lunge a little bit deeper. Feel your strength. Hug the muscles into the bones. See if you can lift your gaze. You want more challenge? You go a little lower. I heard hamstrings, saw hamstrings, need a stretch. So bring your hands to the blocks. Can okay, mine are at the third level. I'm going to step my back foot in and I'm going to plant that heel down. I'm getting a calf stretch in the right leg, hamstring stretch in the left. If your back is rounded, let's take that out. Nice and straight. You need more. Take the blocks to the lower level or get rid of them. Some of you might be able to put your forehead on your shin. Go for it. <laughs> Stretching the back of that left leg and breathing. Let the breath be like waves of the ocean, soothing. Rhythmic. We have all these tools. You now for self-regulation, where we're not counting on something outside of ourselves to change our state of being. To open that right foot now, open that right foot so it's now parallel to the back of the mat. I'm gonna move my block a little closer to me. Bring my weight into my left hand and we'll sweep that right arm up. There's a wall behind you, imaginary wall behind you. If I had you do this at a wall, generally the hips are touching. The head and shoulders are not. I want you to imagine you're leaning back. Maybe look up, belly stays pulled in. My friends that want a little more fire, stop using that left hand for support and use your core to hold you. Now push down through both feet and we're gonna bring it up. We're going to extend the arms out from your shoulders. If you need to adjust your stance a little bit, I'm going to go a bit wider in my feet. Uh, nothing needs to be perfect, but if I drew a line from my wrist to my ankle, that's kind of about the width you want. Let's lunge into that left knee. Warrior two. So embody that energy. You know, when I think of warrior, it's incredible strength and resiliency. 
but we want to bring in a like an element of steady um last one i want to do here is bring your forearm to your thigh when i do that right arm stretches to the sky i don't collapse the left shoulder i stay really strong like i press the forearm down you could turn your gaze up you could turn your palm forward and drop it by your ear if you're like emily i need more you bring that left hand to the block or to the floor to the inside okay let's transition together with grace for the sake of your joints mostly i'm going to bring my hands back to the blocks i'm going to lift my back heel now my stance is really wide so i'm going to shorten it up a little bit before i step to the top of the mat right foot comes forward i'm back in my chair drop your hips take all rounding out of your back feel your legs strong root down to rise up inhale all the way up and let's just exhale slow 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 let the arms float down Your breath is an ally. You know, when we know how to work with it, it's very empowering because we can make a positive shift on our own. How many times I just find myself back to the breath. Take a moment, circle back to your intention. You know, we're so conditioned to be going and moving and you know i don't think most of us were really taught the value of stillness so sometimes it's moving through a bit of discomfort to claim that back let's do the second side together inhale arms reaching up we're going to catch that left wrist again Pull your belly in. This is lateral flexion. It builds a little strength in your core too. Pull your body to the right. And shift a little weight into your left foot. You might feel a bit more. Come to center, inhale strong. So you're really solid here. You're strong and engaged through your core, holding the other wrist and taking it to the side. Bring in a smile with me. Come back to center, inhale. Exhale. Coming down into your chair. Back is straight, legs are strong. Send the left leg back. You'll learn over time if you don't already like exactly where that foot naturally needs to land. For you to bring the knee down and get that stretch that you want. Arms reaching up, although they could stay. I don't think I reached them up before. I think I kept them on the block. So on the blocks or on your thigh. Bring the hands to the blocks and we'll turn this into a high lunge, but the hands are going to stay down. Just holding it here. This is where I brought the arms up. So hands can come on top of that thigh or they can stretch up. So this is glutes are engaged in this right hip. Quads are engaged in the back. Dropping deep. Imagine I come over and I'm just going to like encourage your ribs to lift up without you losing the lunge, your arms to lift, soft expression on your face. Breath. Hands release down. Step that back foot in. This is called pyramid. Back foot in, heel comes down. My toes are really still even more narrow than a 45 degree angle. My toes are at like 11 o'clock. And with a straight spine, I'm just breathing here. Back calf, front hamstrings. Take your body, melt more if you've got the flexibility. We're going to 
go ahead and open up that back foot. It's parallel to the back of the mat. I'm bringing my block a little closer in. Start to feel the inner thigh opening up. Take the left arm and just scoop it up. You will feel much more in a straight line, hips forward, shoulders back. Generally, we don't do that because we feel a little bit uncertain about balance, but try it. Stay safe. Notice the moments when your breath gets a little locked up. Again, you can stop using that right hand so much for support. You're using really your obliques, your core to balance without that hand. And then we're going to bring it all the way up. So adjust your feet a little bit if you need to. I want a little wider stance. Gaze over your front hand. Lunge into that front knee. The way we protect the knee, keep your knee tracking over like that second toe. Tight inner thighs, the knee's gonna wanna dip in, so to the little toe side. Let's try side angle. Forearm coming to the thigh. Don't collapse the shoulder to the ear, press it down, turn your gaze up, float the arm up. Maybe turn the palm in, drop it by your ear. Eventually this right hand either comes to the block or to the floor, to the inside. I like it on the inside. A lot of people teach it on the outside. I think it keeps that knee tracking properly. With strong legs and breath. And the transition out of this, you know, <laughs> just uh, take care of yourself. So I'm spinning my arms around. I'm going to find those blocks. I'm going to lift the back heel and I need to shorten my stance because my stance was too wide. We're going to step it to the top. Back into that chair. Drop your hips low. Push up. Inhale. And then let's exhale super slow together. Letting the arms just drift and drop low. And just stand with me here again. Really valuable practice I have found for me. I can get into that nervous system overdrive too for different reasons. Is when I feel myself rushing it's like a pause. Is this worth the price of my peace? Because, you know, maintaining a sense of peace and calm, um, more, you know, it's like, mm, it's like better soil, good soil for healing. Tree feels like a good balancing pose. I think we could do today. Let's do a tree. And then I think I'll bring us onto our backs for a bit. So I'd be here. To be holding on, could come to the inner calf, could catch it, bring it all the way up. Try to turn the toes down, push. If you've got your foot on your thigh, press your foot into your thigh, engage your thigh back into your foot. It's like hug in and up, and then take the arms up. I like in releasing my hands and extending my index fingers. There's something about that that feels like connected and then just in this moment offer some encouragement to yourself you showed up you're here and we'll go ahead and release as you're ready and let's change to the other side just mirror what you did. If your balance feels like really challenging, meet it with love. Meet it with compassion. That's like the best. Calms, calms it down. Calms the judgment down. Calms the like wanting it to be anything other than it is. Calms it down. 
I just pass on what works for me. <laughs> Take what works. Ignore what doesn't. If you can bring your gaze more eye level, bring your chin more level to the floor. Think so much about balance, his presence. If you kind of pop out and you're distracted, you know, we lose the balance. So we'll let that go, shake things out a little bit. Shake out the legs, shake out the arms. <laughs> We're going to take a squat, I think, before I bring you down. So you can always sit on blocks. Squat and happy baby are very similar. But this would be like really modified. You take the block out. Take it out all together. I have a lot of students that say, why don't my heels come down? Sometimes that's tension. Sometimes it's compression. As long as you feel like you're not going to fall backwards, that's mostly what I want. can come to the heart. Wonderful for hips. I'm going to show you this modified at the wall for those of you that have knee issues. I just want to show it to you so you can kind of make a mental note because if there are postures that we do that feel good, you know, you don't have to like have a video. You don't have to have a you can take 10 minutes and do something on your own that feels good and trust that your body's got enough, you know, wisdom in it to, to come up with some things that feel good. I'm gonna bring you on your back, but I'm gonna show you this first. Working at the wall is like, I do a lot of this and I don't do it with us because you may not have a wall, but well, first of all, you get in close. This is just intermission, you don't have to do it. You get in nice and close, lie down, fling up. So if I did this, if I take my feet into that same position and I'm just here, there's your squat, no pressure on the knees, hips are still getting the same opening. Working at the wall is awesome. Okay, so then I'm gonna have you just go ahead and come onto your back. Go ahead and lie down and let's just go, why don't we go soles of the feet together, knees apart. And just put your hands on your belly. I just want to check what all, what other requests you had. Low back, good. All right, we'll focus a little on our back. Feet together, knees apart for now. Wonderful. Focus on our back. Place your feet down flat. You could, if you wanted to, let's try this. If you have a block, put it in between your knees. If you don't have a block, don't worry about it. I usually do the second level. You could do the first or the second in between my knees. Generally, when we come into a bridge, the knees splay out. When the knees splay out, you're compressing the sacrum. So we want the knees to track straight ahead. I'm gonna give a little tuck of my shoulder blades in towards my spine. And then I'm gonna lift up. My inner thighs are working. My glutes are working. My hamstrings are contracted. I could interlace my hands underneath me. Wrap my shoulders underneath. This is like, this is a good one to do as long as it's not stressing your neck in some way, or as long as, you know, it's okay to bring your heart above your head like this, it doesn't make you dizzy. And then we breathe. Maintaining extension in the spine, really important. Maybe lift up a little more, contract your glutes, 
Having strong glutes. I often notice with clients, lower back stuff can come from weaker glutes and weaker hamstrings. Very common. Go ahead and come down. Take that block out. Go knees together and feet apart. Knees together, feet apart. Just take up some space with your arms. Feel your spine. Feel the weight of the knees together. The breath be easy. For me, it's in the quieting and the slowing down that I can hear my intuition's voice, that I can hear my internal wisdom of a decision I need to make or something I'm working on personally. And if I keep going and going and going and don't give myself time for quiet and contemplation, then I miss, I miss the, the wisdom. And just taking a couple of breaths here together. stretch up overhead now and with your feet wide take your knees to the right so my left foot is still towards the left edge of my mat lots of distance between my feet my right thigh just relaxes all the way down my left knee is hovering but I'm letting it drop this is opening up that left hip See if you can send your breath down into the belly. Really is a skill and you can do that, you know. Learn how to bring the breath into different parts of the body. And take it to the left. Knees to the left. Breathing into that right hip. So if you're not feeling enough, the right foot needs to come higher up and maybe further to the right. And if you're feeling too much, again, work it backwards. Sensitivity in the knees, flexing the feet. And we'll bring it back to center. Okay, my friends had asked for lower back. Uh, I do this twist all the time, all the time. Right thigh over left. So. You could just take a simple twist. You could just take one knee across and down. This is much deeper. So my thighs are stacked as if I'm in an eagle pose or seated properly in a chair, right? Now I'm gonna push my left foot down and I'm gonna pick my hips up like you're doing a bridge. Pick your hips up and just swing your hips to the right. So I'm really on my left hip and then drop your knees to the left. And if they'll come all the way down, let them come all the way down. And then your right arm is going to come up and turn your head to the left, left ear down. So we're getting the rotation in the spine. Maybe you feel something in the pecs. I had a double mastectomy reconstruction in 2010. I had reconstruction again in 2020, so preventative, but just sharing that because I've got tons of scar tissue. This helps me. Getting a little deeper twist with the legs threaded together. You might feel something in the hip and in the glutes as well. And then notice your breath. Great. This is a great one if you like it. Do it on your own and just hang out. You know, three minutes becomes almost like little mini meditations. There's a practice called yin yoga. Go ahead and unwind. Yin, Y-I-N. Passive yoga. It's holding postures like that for three, five, seven minutes at a time and just like letting the body totally sink in and relax. It's a lovely practice. Left over right. Push my foot down, lift my hips. 
Swing my hips to the left. Take my knees to the right. They're coming all the way down if you can. So it's like eagle. My foot's, my left foot is somewhat pinned down. Left arm up. Head turns to the right. You might have your right hand and it might like, I mean, we're not taught this. Like, you know, it's like weird, right? If I guide you to like, touch your rib cage or touch your hip or touch your thigh, but, um, you know, touch is healing, right? So you can offer that to yourself. And compassion in your hands. Go ahead and unwind your spine. Bring it back to center. Hips back into the midline. Hug your knees into your chest. Just wrap your arms around your shins. I just wanted to share this because I don't want to. I don't want to be talking during shavasana or about it. But just know that you know you are welcome to reach out to me if you have any specific questions. I welcome it. Breathing into your lower back here. You can do this in the morning, you know, when you wake up, just hug your knees into your chest and breathe down into your belly and offer yourself a prayer for the day. Find a happy baby here. Find your inner arches or your heels. I like holding the inside. It's often taught to hold the outside. It's preference, really. Knees are wide. Flex your feet. So my feet are, you know, like facing the ceiling. My knees are just to the sides of my ribs. If there's tightness here, your hips are going to want to lift. Try to lengthen the tailbone down and allow your body to rock side to side. We do see little babies do this. Chuckle sometimes when you see them. I'm just going to let my legs extend out straight. And I've moved my hands really to my calves, just below, just above the ankle. Using that, I'm holding kind of the top, not the outside. And then the weight of my arms is this. Flex through your feet. Bring our knees in, and I want you to rock up. So if it's okay for you to rock up, do it. If you've got any scoliosis, this doesn't feel great. If you're not rounding your spine, it's going to be clunky. So really roll like a ball, tuck your chin in. Do one more. If you hate it, don't do it. <laughs> Hold permission to do whatever you want. <laughs> Cross-legged seat. Let's see how I am. Okay, perfect. Cross-legged seat. If you're like, I can't do a cross-legged seat, Emily, put some blankets underneath your hips. Just sit up as tall as you can for a moment. Feel your sitting bones. Important to know where those are. <laughs> and then just feel your nice tall spine, straight spine. And parallel to the ground. Just breathing with me. Again, our posture, different mindset when you really understand that posture isn't necessarily like, I mean, of course it's good for us. And of course it's felt, you know, by the other. If I'm slouched versus straight, somebody feels the difference. But beyond that, from an energetic standpoint in the body, straight spine <laughs> it allows things to flow more freely, it allows your lungs to breathe, heart is more open, the 
chakras that run from the root to the crown. There's benefits, you know, many, many benefits. I want you to just flip the cross of your feet. If one's a little more awkward, just notice it. Sometimes imbalances in the hips will show up. And again, just seated for a moment and breathing. Thank you breathe into your spine. The chakras are as real as organs in the body, even though we can't see them. Very, the most accessible is the heart. Wow, to feel love, intense love, to feel gratitude, to feel grief. That well, seems to be the one that's most accessible. When we're in a state of trauma, the root chakra, our safety feels compromised. That's always rude. So they're really, really beautiful to practice and embody and know and feel and pay attention to. It's like a upgrade for me. You know, when I learned it, it's like when your computer system gets a software upgrade, it's like that awareness and that understanding gives me information about myself. And the more I know about myself, the more I'm supported in my healing journey, whatever that is. And have you go ahead and lie down, please. We have just a little bit of time, I think, at the end to say goodbye to each other for however long that'll be. So go ahead and lie down. I'll leave this song on just for a minute. It's a beautiful song, and then I'll change it in a moment. Lining back in whatever way is comfortable. Cover the eyes. Cover yourself with a blanket. Blankets really key. <laughs> so this chant is May all beings be free from suffering. May all beings know peace. May all beings be happy and free. That's how it translates. And the song is called Diamonds in the Sun. Really sweet. I'm passing this blessing on for healing for each of you, whether you're watching or participating. You so much love and peace and grace and strength wherever you are. Journey. Go ahead and change this song to something a little quieter for us to drop into. So if you feel any bit of agitation in the body, really very simple way to help diffuse some of that is to take a deep breath in. Hold the breath in and squeeze. Squeeze, 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 squeeze your seat, squeeze your hands, squeeze your face, squeeze your core, and then ah. You can do that a couple of times that's helpful to create a relaxation response in the body. Really, if I leave you with anything, anything and everything we can do to, to send a signal of safety to the body, to get the nervous system in um, parasympathetic, out of stress mode, out of survival mode, into a feeling of safety. That is like the foundation I believe, for healing of any kind. And to be mm, always exploring what that is for you, what practices, what in your life helps anchor that in and support that. And we can't maintain it, right? Life is going to be really stressful at times. but. If it's walking in nature, if it's taking time to breathe, if it's drinking more water or having a soul friend that you can tell everything to.
yourself drop in here and I'll get quiet. I want you to let yourself drop into a place of stillness, of quiet, of comfort, of clarity, of no thinking, just being and maybe listening. And this dropping into the heart helps. offer this reading if I can get through it without gearing up <laughs> we'll continue to rest it's called ignite after you survive your storm you simply must try to become a lighthouse my love your scars are meant to burn so bright that they will help a person lost at sea find the shore. Every wound you carry has a thousand watt light bulb inside of it that preaches the gospel of the coming dawn, one burst of daybreak at a time. It's the circle of survival. You have endured to help others endure. You have outlasted the dark to become a disciple of the light. This is your calling now to plant your feet in the same shore you washed up on to insult the darkness by vowing to stand against it, to save as many others who are lost amid the storm and of course, to ignite. My love, it's time. Ignite, ignite, ignite. Beautiful reading. Find a nice big breath in. Empty slow. Empty all that doesn't serve. And as you are ready, gently place your feet on the mat. Right arm might want to stretch up overhead as you curl to your right side, knees tucked in. Taking another couple of breaths here. Breathe in, courage.
Ready, use that left hand and we'll find our way up to seated with that straight spine. Eyes can stay closed. But taking a moment to just say thank you for showing up. Thank you for trusting me. Yeah. And a reminder, really, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years plus. Go and bring the hands together in prayer. But, you know, namaste, it really is. It is seeing your own divinity, seeing it within yourself. The more I think we can see it within ourselves, the more we can see it in the other. Really seeing beyond our wounding and the wounding of others and connect to their divinity. So lots of love. Namaste. Thank you. Well, feel free. 159. <laughs> if you want to unmute, if you want to put your camera on, uh, just, just say hello or not. And uh, thank you guys. So hopefully thank we'll... Thank you so much. You're welcome so much. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I love that. Um, who wrote that? Oh, okay. Hold on a second. It's Josh Rodell. R-O-E-D-E-L. R-O-E-D-E-L. Anyway, you can always email me or whatever. Catch me and I'll, I'll send it to you too. That was yeah, beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So good. <laughs> That. Okay, good to see your faces, you guys. Thank you so much. It was another wonderful class. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Yes, and thank you, Stephanie, thank for you. week after week <laughs> sitting with us while I teach and just being present and holding the space. And it makes a difference if it were just me. So know that even though, you know, just know I, I appreciate that really so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank everyone for for joining us week after week and stay tuned as we uh, take a break and hopefully come back in a few weeks or so. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so too. A question. Can you just repeat who that was that wrote that uh, passage? Why don't I just drop it? I don't know if you can copy and paste, but I'm just going to put it here in the little zoomy thing. Hold on. Oh, but perfect. The, the chat not accessible later is it ignite. no but here if you look i just put it in there in there and it's called ignite if you look at that and then at the bottom the author is john rodell i have hundreds of these that i've collected and anyway really so much of what he writes is beautiful but i thought that that one was appropriate for it's today sure. great thank yeah. you very much very you so much he has other really good things yeah okay good Mwah. Okay, peace, peace. Bye. Hope to see you again. Take care, you guys. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.